Today will be part 72 in the series, Scriptures Often Ignored, and today we're going to be doing a lesson on the Yaudiath Hebrew language, also known as Hebrew 101. And because this is a truth network, we use the restored names of our father, Yahuwah, along with the restored name of the son, Yahusha, as you can see in the Paleo-Hebrew read from right to left, and we're going to be talking more about that. We also use the restored title for our father, Alua, which means Almighty One, Almighty Yahuwah Singular, according to Deuteronomy 6.4 and Strong's H433. Now, I've been meaning to do this video for a long time. This video is going to be an informative one talking about the language and also talking about the Hebrew or the Yaudiath alphabet also and why we pronounce words the way that we do and also words to avoid. So prayerfully, this will be very helpful to you indeed. Now, as you can see right here, this gives you a chart of the Paleo, which is right here in the pictographic, and the modern Hebrew alphabet, or Aleph Bet, as it's commonly known, which is commonly used in modern Hebrew today. Now, there are tons of differences when it comes to the Paleo versus the modern Hebrew, and we're going to be talking about some of those differences, actually, and going in depth with a whole lot of them, and you're going to see that they're basically two different languages, actually. And I'm also going to be sharing from a video and link that video in the description box the entire playlist so you can learn more if you would like to get more into the root of the Yaudiath in the Hebrew language and really get a deeper understanding. But for right now, we're just going to break it down alphabet and break it down letter by letter. As you can see right here, the Hebrew alphabet has commonly 22 letters. And what's also interesting to note is that each of the letters has a numerical value as you can see right here going all the way from one all the way to the number 400 and i've talked about this in previous videos so now we're going to go over each letter and then we're going to talk about things such as vowel pointing and also the vowels in the language we're going to talk about how they're to be pronounced and the restore pronunciations and then we're going to also go over a few of the words and also i'll let you know some of the words i use and why we use the pronunciations we do and also words to avoid that come from pagan origins now first the first letter right here is commonly known as aleph and we'll also look at the pictographic pronunciation as you can can see right here this is how it's drawn in the modern Hebrew this is how it looks pictographically like an ox head and it has the symbol of an a because it makes the a sound then next we have the both or the bet as it's commonly known right here and it makes the B sound and it represents a house because each letter pictographically stands for a picture and then we have the gum or the gimel right here and this is how it looks in the modern Hebrew this is how it looks in the ancient paleo Hebrew right here which represents foot or Campbell and it makes the G or the G sound then we have the doll or the Dalit which is the door as you can see right here this is how it looks in the modern Hebrew and it makes the D sound then we have the ah or the hey right here which can make an H or also an AH sound also right here as you see and this represents behold the next letter right here is the ooh right here, and it represents a nail, and it can represent a tent peg also. This is how it looks in the modern Hebrew. Now it makes the ooh sound, so think of the word pool, or think of the word room. It makes the ooh sound. The next letter is zayan, which represents weapon, plow, or to cut down. And you can see it right here in the modern. This is how it looks in the Paleo Hebrew, which makes the Z right here. And then the next letter right here is the hot or the ket right here. It's commonly pronounced as the hot when it comes to modern Hebrew. This is how it looks in the Paleo. Now with this letter, it means a wall or a fence of separation. Now it can make the CH sound, but it can also be used with the K to make the K sound interchangeably. The next letter which is the ninth letter of the Hebrew alphabet is the tot or what's commonly known as the tet which makes the t or the t sound as you can see in the modern and then this is the paleo 
The next letter, which is the 10th letter of the Yaudi at their Hebrew alphabet, is this one, which is the Yod right here, which makes the Y, the Y sound. And this is how it looks in the modern Hebrew and the Paleo Hebrew. And so far with the first 10 letters right here, we actually already have the name of our father, as we see, known as Yahua, because we have the Yod right here. We have the He right here, which makes the Ah sound, A-H. And then we have the U right here, which makes the U sound sound and then once again we have a second hey or ah so when we put it together we get ya and then we get ah so we get ya Ooh, so we have ya ooh, and then the second hey to get ya ooh. I also talk more about this in my video, What is the Names of the Father and the Son? So if you have not checked out that video, definitely check it out. And then the 11th letter in the Yaudiath or the Hebrew alphabet is the Kop right here, or the Kaf as it's commonly known. And as you can see in the modern, it actually has two. And we're going to be talking more about that in the differences of it. Now, as you can see right here, it makes the K sound. And it actually, pictographically speaking, means palm of hand or open hand to reveal. And so the next letter right here is Lam, which is commonly known as Lamad right here, as you can see right here, which represents pictographically a staff, which also means to lead or to guide because Hebrew Yaudiath is a picture-based language and is based on pictures more so than it is on abstractions as we see in more westernized languages. The next one is mom right here as you see in the modern and also in the uh, pictographic right here and it represents water right there because it means water. Now the lam again means to lead makes the L sound and mom makes the M sound. The lamad or lam has a symbol of the number 30 while mom has 40 and it just increases from there. The next letter is the the noon right here which represents seed or life and actually in the ancient Hebrew you actually see it representing the seed or it looks just like the seed and you can see it here in the modern Hebrew it makes the N sound and then the next letter is the Samach or the Psalm which makes the S sound right here which also means support or propping staff and you can see it in the modern right here the next letter is a yan and the reason that it's a circle right there is because it actually represents the eye so it means to have the eye to see experience this is how it looks in the modern and it makes the uh sound the next letter is the pa or what's commonly known as the pay which means mouth word speak you can see it right here pictographically in the paleo hebrew and also right here in the modern and it makes the p the p sound the next letter is a tzad right here and it makes the tz or the ts sound and this is how it looks in the modern now this in the pictographically it can actually represent a fish hook now there's the ku or the cop right here and also in its definition it can also represent the sun on horizon or something being behind something it makes the Q sound right here the next letter is the Rosh which has a numerical value of 200 as you can see right here in the modern and then this right here in the paleo ancient Hebrew now this letter means and represents first or chief and it makes the R sound now, although this letter looks like a W, it actually is the Sean, and actually this is how it looks in the modern, and this is how it looks in the paleo, but when you actually draw it out, and when our ancestors drew it out, it actually looks like and resembles teeth, because it means teeth consume destroy and it actually makes the sh sound and then the next letter is the ta or the tu or the thu or what's commonly known as the tav and it makes the th sound actually and it's represented by an x right here now it looks like an x but it actually represents what mark sign or covenant and it represents the number 400 and we've gone over this in detail and also this is how it looks in the modern Hebrew and here you have your 22 letters that comprise your Hebrew Yaudiath alphabet. And now we'll be talking about some of the differences between modern Hebrew and original Yaudiath. And like I said, I'll be sure to link this video. This video comes from Sister Ayana, and I'll link it in the description box below, who does a great job breaking down the Hebrew alphabet and the differences between Hebrew and the original Yaudiath, and even a video discussing if it should even be called Hebrew. But for the sake of time and for clarity, we'll also be talking about some of the differences. As you can see, here is an ancient scroll that actually 
actually has the letters written down in that ancient original Yaudiath language and remember it goes from right to left and actually right here we even see the name of our creator that's written right there Yahua. So some of the main differences that we already noted between modern Hebrew or so-called Hebrew and then the original Yaudiath letters that we already talked about is that when it comes to modern, we know that modern is way newer and we know that the Paleo-Hebrew is much older and this was the version that was used during the time of King David and also during the time of the prophets of old now we see that modern hebrew came post babylonian captivity and when it came there were many changes that were done so after the children of yasharal went into captivity for babylon they then adopted the language during that time just like they had to adopt uh, the greek language during the time of greek captivity and also other languages during their respective captivities just like now even with english for now at least so when they show you the dead sea scrolls they're showing you the modern hebrew because it came during the time of post babylonian captivity but was still not the actual language that was used during the time of scripture now as you can see and as we went over original yaudiath letters both the paleo and the pictographic because there was even one even more ancient they're based on practical everyday things that you see so for example this is the bath which is the second letter which we went over which means house or shelter again remember we went over the mom which also means water we went over the shan which represents teeth we went over the ayan which represents i see experience and then remember we said the noon now this is how you see it in the ancient which represents seed or life kaya now of course when it comes to the modern hebrew letters were adopted during the babylonian exile around 597 before our messiah before our mashayak and as you can see they bear almost little to no resemblance now they might bear a little bit resemblance to the original letters but not much because for example we have the shan right here in the modern hebrew which bears some resemblance to this letter but not a whole lot and then we have this letter right here which we went over the ayan which means and represents the ayan and i and see how they have little to no resemblance at all then we have this one the mom right here which represents this one the mom to mean water and see once again they have little to no resemblance then we have the noon also and the this letter right here is actually the cop which means open hand or palm or reveal and this letter is the cot which means wall or separation now another thing to note about the modern Hebrew versus the actual original Yaudiath and what makes it two distinct separate languages comes to the vowel pointing that is used. Now as you see in the modern Hebrew and what they teach you in modern Hebrew so called is Nikud or vowel pointing which is what? Adding and taking away because this is a system of dots and dashes that were used to represent vowel sounds or changes of the pronunciation of consonants. So for example you see right Right here this word right here which means ab or father you see that it has the b right here to make ab but with the vowel pointing that was added in this language it now becomes ab or father and the letter v is not in the original yaudiath language and by the way here's also another hint there is no letter e i o j w v or F in the original Yaudiath language and we're going to be talking more about that now you're probably wondering why they even adopted this system the reason they adopted vowel pointing because we have to remember this comes from who the synagogue of Satan those who call themselves the chosen but are not and ironically enough they call themselves Jew J E W even though those letters J, E, W, none of them are actually in the original Yaudiath language. Very interesting and suspicious indeed. Now I've talked about this more in the lost books of the scriptures when we've gone over more of this, but the reason they did all this and added all this vowel pointing to add confusion because we know Yahua is not the author of confusion, but the reason this was done is because it was done by the Masoret Jewish faction done around the 6th through the 10th centuries AD, so well over thousands of years ago, and the reason they did all this vowel pointing is because they wanted to confuse the language, hide words, hide the name of our creator 
letter Yahuwah from us and add vowel pointing to get all these other different names. And we also know that in the original Yahudia, there is absolutely no vowel pointing. Each letter and word is pronounced the same. So for example, with the Baath, it's always pronounced as a B. It does not change from a, a B to a V. It's always the same letter and there are no silent letters. Each of the letters in the Yahudia language all of them contain vowels and we're going to be going over the vowels in just a moment to come so we know with this there was an agenda in mind and the agenda in mind is to hide the names of places to hide the pronunciation of words and names because just as we've also gone over all of the prophets Of old, most of them have Yah or Yahu in their names, just like the word Hallelujah, it actually means praise be to Yah. The song Kumbaya means come by here, Yah, and we've also gone over that and talked more about that too. And I'll also, once again, I talked about that also in my What is the Name of the Father and Son video, which is linked in the description box below. But the reason that's so important is because even if you look at some of the translations in the books of Kings and Chronicles, in the KJV, they use J-A-H or they use J-E-H-O. Once again, they did that to hide the truth from us, but the truth is being revealed to us today. Now, another thing to note is the spelling, because in the original Yaudiath language, the letters retain their shape regardless of their position in a word. So when it comes to the mom, the paleo, and the pictographic, which is even older, it's going to use the same shape regardless. However, when it comes to modern Hebrew, they change Certain letters actually change their form and they change their shape at the end of a word. These are called and commonly known as final letters. And you see this in the cop right here, how it changes. You see it in the mom to mean water, how it changes into a box like that. And then the noon also changes at the end of a word in the modern Hebrew. Same with the letter pe or the pa, which means mouth, word, or speak. And also the tzad, how it changes its shape and form too in the modern Hebrew. Now, another thing to note is sound and pronunciation, because when you actually do the research and start to look up modern Hebrew and where it comes from, and also the Jewish people, you see that there are a group of Khazarian people. They're not actually scripturally of the line of Shem or Sham. And they originate from the Caucasus region. Why is this so important? Is because the language that they're actually speaking is a blend. It's actually Babylonian Yiddish that comprises of the modern Hebrew. And it's adopted from a mixture of German and Hebrew, mostly German words. That's why, for example, when it comes to the modern Hebrew, they tell you that the kat, or the word that actually means and symbolizes wall of separation, they pronounce it like chet. And the reason it's pronounced like chet for them is because it's a German and it's of Germanic deviation and Germanic origin. Now I've actually studied German for four years and I've taken German and I can tell you that English actually is a Germanic language which means that English is derived from German. Although it uses a Latin alphabet, it is a Germanic language. That's why when you look at the German language, you see a whole lot of letters that are very reminiscent and similar to the English. Like for example, the word mouse in German is mouse. The word house in German is pronounced house. It's just spelled a little differently. But the reason that's important is because that's where modern Hebrew originates from. It has and takes on German or Yiddish, which is a mixture of of German and modern Hebrew, but it's a different pronunciation. And these two languages sound completely different from one another when you actually start to pronounce it because the Yaudi at the original language sounds nothing like the modern so-called Hebrew that's pushed and promoted by the Jewish people. So once again, there are essentially two different languages. And like I said, if you would like to take a look at this video that goes into more detail, I'll be sure to link it in the description box below. 
Now here is a list of the Yaudiath letters as you see right here. Now the ones that are highlighted in orange, these are the vowels and these are the five vowels that are used in the language. Another lie that they try to tell you is that, oh, there are no vowels that are used in the Hebrew, so they had to make up their own vowels and that is not true. The reason that they say that and promote that is because they're trying to hide the truth from people. But once again, this just gives you a list of it. So you see the all right here, the ah right here, the u the ya or the yod and the ayan these make up your five vowels in the yaudiath language and the rest of the 17 letters make up your consonants and as you can see right here this goes through all of them this is the all or the alp which is commonly known as the olive and it makes the ah sound the bath which makes the b sound the gam again which makes the g sound the dalit or the dalt again that means door and it makes the d sound the ah right here the oo which makes the oo sound like pool or room the zan which makes the z sound right here which also means weapon or cut off or plow and then again, this is the letter in the Yaudiath which makes the kat sound because it's just a K or a CH interchangeably. But if you look at the modern Hebrew, they pronounce it as a chet. So you see the difference there. You see the difference in the dialect there. And again, we know why. Now this is the tat or the ta which makes the T sound. This is the yod or the ya which makes the Y sound. The kop which makes the K sound. The lam which makes the L sound. The mom which makes the ma or the M sound, the noon to make the letter N, the Samak to make the S sound, the Ayan which can make the A sound, the Pa to make the P sound, the Tsad which looks like a fish hook right here which also makes the TS sound, the Koop right here which also makes the Q sound, the Rosh right here to make the R sound, and then the Shan which of course represents the teeth to make the SH sound, and then the Thu or the Tu which makes the T sound which represents Mark sign or covenant and is the last letter of the Yaudiath Hebrew alphabet. So of course when it says the Aleph and the Tau which references Yahusha being the all and the thu or the aleph and the tav. That's what the beginning and the end because the all is the beginning of the alphabet while the tu is the end of the alphabet. And I'll also leave some helpful charts in the description box below so you can also follow along and get a better understanding of what each letter means. And I'll also leave this website in the description box below from ancient-hebrew.org and the evolution of the first 10 Hebrew letters in graphics as you see right here. Now when it comes to the first letter, the all or the olive, this is how it looked in the early Hebrew. As you can see right here, it looks just like an ox head right here. And then in the middle Hebrew, which is the paleo, which is what we use, which was used during the time of King David all the way up even until the time of Babylonian captivity and then the late Hebrew which of course emerged right after Babylonian captivity until the modern Hebrew that's used today. So you see how it gone through many changes and now of course the Greek uses the letter A and then the Roman adopted into the letter A into the number one. And then if we keep going we also have the Baath and again, this letter represents a house or shelter as we see from the early Hebrew into the middle Hebrew or the Yaudiath, and then the late Hebrew, how it transformed into this, which you see today, the number two, and then represented by the Greek Greco Roman as the letter B. And then the Gam or the Gamal right here is this letter right here. Now, this means foot. And this is how it looked in the early Hebrew, the ancient Hebrew, and then the Yaudi at the Paleo, and then the late, and then the modern, how it looks today. Now, as you can see, it makes the number three, and it's represented by Greco-Roman G. Now, in the Greek language, it can also be represented by C, but it actually makes the G sound. We also have the doll or the dalit right here. Now in the early Hebrew, as you can see, it looks just like a door right there, even though it looks like a triangle, but it represents a door. Then in the paleo, this is how it looks and was adopted into the Greek to then get the D. And then the number four right here, as we see with the late Hebrew, then into the modern. We also have the same thing when it comes to the ah or the hey. This is how it looks. It represents with a man with arms raised up to represent worship also. Then it was adopted and derived here in the middle or the paleo Hebrew. Hebrew, then the late Hebrew, and then the modern, which also represents the letter E or the number five. Now it's pronounced as the ah sound, but in Greco-Roman it was transformed into the letter E, and you see how it actually looks like the letter E too. 
Now, when it comes to this letter, it does make the oo sound like room or pool, but in the early Hebrew, it looks like the letter Y, and then it also translates to here in the middle or the paleo. This is the late Hebrew, and then the modern Hebrew looks like that, and it comes from the number nine, but it's actually, of course, pictographically speaking, represents number six and comes from the Greco-Roman letter F, but we know it makes the oo sound. The next one is the Zion, which is the number seven represented here. Now, you see it kind of looks looks like a letter I, but it actually represents weapon. This is how it looks in the middle or the paleo and then the late Hebrew to get the modern right here. Now for the Greco-Roman, it looks just like the letter Z right here, and that was what it was adopted to, the Zion, which means the letter Z, and it has the representation of the Z, and it makes the Z sound. And then the Kat right here, as you see, which also represents the fence or the wall of separation, it kind of looks like the letter H a little bit, and then when it was derived into late Hebrew, this is how it was evolved since, and it looks like the Greco-Roman letter H to represent the number eight, but we know it makes the H and the K sound interchangeably and then the tot right here which is the early Hebrew and then the paleo and then the late and then the modern which is this Greek letter right here and represents the number six but orderly speaking and when you put it in order it actually is the number nine and then the yud right here is the earlier Hebrew right here which looks like an arm actually or a hand and then the middle Hebrew right here which means hand and the late Hebrew and then the modern Hebrew which represents the Greco-Roman letter I but actually makes the Y sound. And like I said, I'll be sure to link all of these resources in the description box below so that can also help you too when it comes to learning the language. Now here are the words in Ya'udiyat or Hebrew that we commonly use and that you might have commonly seen being used on the channel. And I've been meaning to do this video and explain these words for a long time, but now we're actually going to get to it. Now, the reason that I use some of the words in the Ya'udiyath as opposed to the English equivalent is because many of these English words that we see from the churches, so to speak, are actually of pagan origin. And actually, the word church is of pagan origin too, which we're going to go over. So rather than using the word Bible, we use the word scriptures or in the Ya'udiyath language, which means sapar. And we also listed and noted the Strong's number in parentheses for your records if you would like to do more research on this. Now with this word here, the reason that I try not to say it a whole lot is because it is of pagan origin, all these words are, but it actually means shalom. And of course, you've probably heard me say that word towards the end of videos, but that's what it means, shalom, which can also mean completeness too from Strong's H7965. And so when we put it all together, it's really simple. The language itself is really simple and it's not that difficult when you take away all of the vowel pointing and everything. Now, of course, they pronounce it as shalom, but the reason we pronounce it shalom is because we have the shan right here. So we know that makes the SH sound. We have the lam right here, which makes the L sound. But then we have this oo right here, which makes the oo sound, just like in our father's name, Yahua. And then we have the mom right here, which makes the mom or the ma sound. So when we put it together, we get shalom. So you see how we put it together? It says shalom, shalom. And that's really how simple it really is. And you can apply this for all the other words too, as we will be doing in a moment to come. Now, another word you'll probably see me use on this channel when it comes to these videos is this one, esteem, instead of this word, which means kabud in the Ya'udiyath language. Another word here is favor instead of this one, because remember, the bolded ones are of pagan origin, which means khan or kanan, which also represents the name of one of the people in scripture, also known as John, or Ya'ukanan, which means Ya'ua favors. We also have this word here, the good news or the great news which can also mean bashura and then this word here rather than using this f word because it is of pagan origin we use the word belief or which also means amuna and i've used this word before in some of my videos amuna right there now instead of using this word bless because notice how it also can mean be less see how they do a play on words we use barak or baruch right here or a baraka for the plural right there. And instead of using this W word, we might use discernment, which can also mean kakama. And this is actually what we talked about in our living righteously. 
Now, instead of this word right here, because remember, these words that are bolded, they are, in fact, of pagan origin. So instead of mercy, we would say compassion. Now, in the Yaudia, they can be rakam or can also be rakum right here. And instead of this word, we might refer to it as messenger, which can be malk or malkium right there. And instead of the word spirit, we use the word wind or breath, which can also mean rook. And once again, here's another practical application because we know the word Rook from Strong's H7307, it has three letters in it. And the three letters that it has, the first one is a Rosh, the second one is an U or what they commonly call the Vav, and the third one is a Kat or or what they commonly know as a chet. Now it means breath or wind or spirit, but we see the rosh, which is the R sound. We see the oo to make the oo sound, and then we have the kat right here. So when we put it together, it just makes rook, rook, rook. Now, of course, they added the vowel points right there to get ruach and to get other pronunciations like ruach, but when you actually put it together, you just get the word rook, and we see how simple this really is. And really, it's a whole lot simpler than what they try to make it out to be. And when we start to really learn, we see that once again, Yahuwah is not the author of confusion. The language should just click and it should just be real simple to follow. And prayerfully, this video is helping. And prayerfully, the also the links in the description box will also be of great resource for you indeed. Now, if we keep going from there, we have this word here, Christ. Yes, this word is a pagan word. And I've also gone over this in my Pagan Origins of Jesus Christ video which I'm going to link in the description box below also because this word also means Krishna in the Sanskrit language. So when you're calling on Christ, you're actually calling on Krishna and you do not even know it, but it represents the word Messiah. And I know we definitely used this word before, which means mashayak or mashyak right here. Now we do not use this word church anymore because this word derives from the Greek idol of Circe, but rather we use the word assembly, which means call or ada right here, which can also mean congregation or assembly. And rather than using the word holy, we use made apart or separate, which can also mean kadash or Kadush, as it's commonly known in the Yaudiath language. And the same goes for sanctify, because this word is also of pagan origin. We use Kadash or Kadush. And rather than the word life, which comes from Norse mythology, we use the word Kaya. Now here are some other words, names, and titles that we avoid, and the reason we do so is because we know that calling upon these words and names that is not the name of our Father is in fact breaking the third commandment, which is what? Not to take his name in vain. And also I've covered this plenty of times in many of my videos that were done last year. If you have not taken a look at them or if you're new to this channel, please take a look at my Be Deceived No More playlist so you can be deceived no more and also my Torah truth playlists because yes, names are important and anyone who's saying that they're not, they are committing witchcraft. Now, the reason we do not use L-O-R-D is because you're actually calling on Baal and you do not even know it. So when your pastor calls on L-O-R-D or when you're saying B-L-E-S-S, L-O-R-D, who are you really talking about? Who are you really calling on? because it's the exact same word. Here we are in Strong's H1167, and they tell you that Baal or Baal means Lord. That's what it means. It's the same exact word. So when you're praising L-O-R-D, you're actually praising Baal, and you do not even know it. You also see the same thing right here in Strong's H1168, where it's what? Baal. It's the same thing, a Phoenician deity, the name, one of the many names of Satan, and that's what it's talking about, this word L-O-R-D. RD is the same as this one. It's an, and it's important that we have that understanding indeed and know what words mean. And even as Yarm Yahu or Jeremiah chapter 23 verse 27 even tells us right here where it says who tried to make my people forget my name and this is our creator speaking by their dreams which everyone relates to his neighbor as their fathers forgot my name for Baal just like people forgot the name of our creator today for L-O-R-D. See how nothing new is under the sun? And so when it comes to the G word or G-O-D, this is actually a Canaanite deity of fortune and it's also Satan's shortened name too. You can find more about this in Strong's H1408 and 1409, which we will be going to right now.
And here we are right here. Now, as you can see, this Strong's Concordance H1408, you get the word. Now, they pronounce it GAD, but it's actually pronounced as G-A-W-D, or what's commonly known as God. And as you can see right here, it's what? The Babylonian deity of fortune. Fortune, a Babylonian deity. And then when we look right here at Strong's H1409, the word origin, it also means fortune, good fortune. And it occurs two places in Scripture, once in Brashayat or Genesis 30. 11 in another place which is very important and Yashaya or Isaiah chapter 65 verse 11. And once again, our Creator mentions the importance of names and people forgetting the name of our Creator, Yahuwah, using other names and calling on other idols, also breaking the first commandment. But we're here in Isaiah, Yahshua, Yahu 65, verse 11, where it says, But you are those who forsake Yahuwah, who forget my Kadash, or made apart mountain, who prepare a table for G-A-D, or for Gad, or God, and who fill a drink offering for many. So that's the same thing of what people are doing today when they prepare a table and they pray to G-O-D, praying to idols, praying to a Canaanite deity. See how nothing new is under the sun? And I also told you how the G-O-D is actually Satan's shortened name right here, because here we are where it explains Godrial or Godaral, which is Satan's shortened name, is listed as one of the chiefs in the Fallen Watchers. This is depicted in the second section of the Book of Enoch parables. He is said to have been what? Responsible for deceiving Eve. And we know that Satan does what? Deceives the entire world. Because when people say, oh my G-O-D, who are they actually? calling on and the world says this it's become a popular reference even in the secular culture but who are they actually calling on because we see it and of course in churches too we see how Satan has deceived the entire world not anymore be deceived no more and of course we've gone over this in great detail when it comes to J-E-S-U-S -S and why we do not say it on this channel because it means earth pig in the Latin and also contains the Zeus root that's in the Greek. And like I said, if you would like to learn more, please watch the video linked in the description box below. We also do not use this word, amen, and nor do we say it after prayers. And I've also done a video on this because it comes and derives from the pagan Egyptian sun deity, Amen-Ra. So, so what you can say after prayers is so be it, or praise Yahua, or Alleluia, or praise Yahua after your prayers. So once again, note how nothing new is under the sun. When you go to the so-called church or whatever it is that you go to, they're calling on names of how many idols, L-O-R-D, which is Baal, G-O-D, which is a Canaanite deity, J-E-S-U-S, -S, which comes from the Greek deity. So we see we have re references and influences from Canaan and also from Greece, and then the Amen, which is also from Egypt, and then also we have the word Christ, which is of Indian origin, which is also calling on who? Krishna, the Indian idol. So you see how all of these things have been blended together thousands of years later and nothing has changed. All of these idols have been returned into these respective places and locations in the churches. And also when you call on Allah, A-L-L-A-H, the Muslim deity, that's one of 360 moon idols and pagan Arabian idols. So we see all all of these idols that have been blended in modern religion. And like I said, if you would like to learn more, please check out my playlist that's linked in the description box and all my other videos. Now, I would like to make a one correction about what I've said before, because I've also told you how many of the names that are used in scripture for multiple people, there are many names of people and prophets who actually have the exact same name throughout scripture. So for example, the name Yahusha, this is also the commonly named for Joshua, son of Nun, but his actual name in the Yaudiath language was Yahusha. Now, this was also the name of a high priest during the time of Azara or Ezra in the book of Zechariah Yahu or Zechariah chapter 3. Now, I said in reference to Zechariah chapter 3 that this was the name of our Messiah, but actually it's referencing the high priest and would like to correct that. Now, it is the restored name for our Messiah, Yahusha. 
So what does not make sense whatsoever is how can Joshua and J-E-S-U-S, how can they be two totally different names in the English when they have the same Hebrew name or the same Yaudiath name, Yahusha, written right here as we've just shown you. How do they have two different names, especially when the letter J is only a few hundred years old? That makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. Now, of course, there is so much more to this. There is so much more to learn and there's so much more to study. But prayerfully, this gives you an overview and a breakdown of this. And prayerfully, this helps you. And like I said, if you would like me to cover more of this, please let me know in the description box below. Or if you have any questions, please list them in the description box below. But like I said, prayerfully, this has been very helpful unto you. And prayerfully, this gives you a better understanding of the Hebrew Yaudiath language. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, or even recommendations on the scriptures, and if you would like more understanding, or if you just have any questions for me, please feel free to email me at truthunveiled77 at gmail.com. Again, my email is just truthunveiled 7727s not three at gmail.com. Also, if you have any questions regarding scriptures, and if you would like a recommendation of what scriptures that I use and the scriptures that I recommend, also email me at truthunveiled77 at gmail.com and make sure to put scriptures in the title of the email. If you have any questions about anything else, please be sure to email me. Prayerfully, this lesson was very helpful unto you. This is Truth Unveiled here saying shalom.